Welcome to ESPN Big Monday, presented by Bud Light from the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman, Oklahoma. It's a part of Judgment Week on ESPN as tonight the Kansas Jayhawks take on the Oklahoma Sooners in a battle at the top of the Big 12 standings. And speaking of the standings, here is how they stand right now. 11 and 1, 11 and 1. In the next two hours, something has got to give. But Fran Frischella, Blake Griffin, not in uniform tonight, suffered a concussion on Saturday night in the ballgame in Austin, Texas. And there were two or three collisions. They're not exactly sure which one might have caused it. Well, you're right, Ron. And obviously, Dexter Pittman's a big guy. Throws his weight around well, obviously an inadvertent foul. Keep your eye on Balbay and Griffin. Their heads bunk right there. And then this was another possibility, but it's obvious when you watch that game that Blake Griffin was in another time zone. Ron Franklin along with Fran Frischella. Fran, it, it is obvious the question. Plan B, what is that for Oklahoma? Fortunately for Jeff Capel, he's got three very competent perimeter players. Austin Johnson, Willie Warren, Tony Crocker. Nine 20-point games between the three of them. They must pick up the slack today. Holly Rowe is going to have more on the situation with Blake as uh, this game gets underway. It is going to be tossed up. Curtis Shaw, David Hall, and Tom Eads are the officials tonight. Curtis Shaw is the referee. Eads and Hall are the umpires. You got to look at Jeff Capel just a moment ago. It's been a very busy 48 hours because of the injury to Blake Griffin. And Blake sits on the bench tonight. That was not what he desired. He has begged his coaches, his parents, everybody that he could to please let me play. And, and it's, a, it's a smart move, Ron. Oh, I think it you is, know, too. You know, it's a long season. They've had a great year, and they're going to go far in the tournament. His mom and dad looking on. They prepare to jump it up. Tip goes to Kansas. Aldrich inside came down on the baseline. Well, it's a small thing, but that's the first turnover if it's given to Sharon Collins in three games. Austin Johnson works against Collins. On the run, knocks down the jumper. Outlet pass. They're running, and it's Taylor at the other end of the floor. Well, that's where Sharon Collins has been so good. And what leadership he's He's running a team that's the 10th youngest team in college basketball this season. Fran, let's talk about the half twos for both of these clubs. Obviously, Kansas is going to try to get out and run and speed up this tempo. And they also need to exploit Cole Aldridge's size inside as well, Ron. Taylor. Morning star. Quick delivery on a three. Not there. Warren skies for the rebound for OU. Ron, do you remember how good Willie Warren was against Texas? It's important that he doesn't try to do it all early in this game. Taylor Griffin, older brother, up late. Outside. Crocker with the three. Not there. Cold Aldridge comes down with the rebound. And again, Kansas with a very quickened pace. There's no question that they need to run, but they need to go inside as well, right there. First foul on Taylor Griffin, and this is something we're going to have to keep a very close eye on. Holly Rowe, let's go to you. You have more on the Blake Griffin situation. Well, that's right. Blake Griffin had to undergo a series of tests, one after the game, one yesterday, and another one today, with this standardized assessment of concussion. Guys, he had to test things like immediate memory, orientation, concentration, and balance. I, and um, the officials asked me to move, so I'm going to move real quick. But guys, he has improved every single time he took the test on this, but it wasn't good enough to play today. When I talked to Jeff Cable at shoot-around, he said, when the doctor said he shouldn't play, it was an easy decision for us. His health is our best interest. Well, that's, that's exactly what Fran and I were talking about. And that's good going there, Holly. You did not get a technical, but you were close. <laughs> this is Warren. Quick pass inside as they work against Aldridge. That, that foul a moment ago as Oklahoma turns it over was against Taylor Griffin. Here are the starting lineups in this one tonight for, first of all, the visitors from Lawrence. Sharon Collins, Morningstar, Taylor, Morris, and Aldridge. Johnson, Warren, Crocker, Taylor Griffin, and Ryan Wright gets a start tonight for the Oklahoma Sooners. He is a junior out of Ontario. 
Aldridge left it on. And he will kiss it off the glass <laughs> on an 18 footer. And the crowd groans as a 6 0 run by KU was on the board. He's actually not a bad perimeter shooter, but I don't think he meant to bank that shot. I think his arm got banged, and that's the reason that it happened. This is Warren, a little crossover dribble. Working against Morningstar, and if you don't know anything about Brady Morningstar, his head coach says one thing. He is our best on ball, our best defender of all. Taylor Griffin. Shot clock is at five. I'm not sure Crocker knows it. Still yo-yoing the ball. Two seconds down to one, and it's a shot clock violation. Nice job by Kansas. That's the second turnover against the Sooners. Keep this in mind, Ron. Kansas had to change their entire strategy after their shoot around today. Back at the hotel, they had planned to double team Blake Griffin inside. They don't need to do that, so they're going to really stretch their defense on those three point shooters. So that's the biggest change that they made. Absolutely. And they had to do it on the fly because they didn't get news of Griffin's missing this game until after their shoot around. Well, Marcus Morris reaches out and hands the ball off like a quarterback rather than flipping the ball to uh, Sharon Collins and the second turnover against the Jayhawks. Jeff Capel told his team we don't need any one player to play great. We've got to do it as a team. Austin Johnson misses completely, I think, because of the hand that came up. That was a tough shot. They've yeah. taken a number of tough contested shots already. To say one thing about Austin also. He had to have about a 30 minute treatment heat on his back. It's a problem that he has had not just this year but last year as well. Here's Collins drives into the middle runner won't go. Tanner Griffin rebounds for OU. And the freshman Willie Warren was guarding Collins that time. Crocker left open this time and he switches it. Tony Crocker has had a season high seven threes already this year along with Warren and Johnson. Bill Self cannot let them get going. Morningstar picks up the dribble gets it over to Taylor. 6 5 KU lead and this crowd is electric tonight a whiteout at the Lloyd Noble Center. Tough shot can't get it Griffin another interview. Willie Warren, little gingerbread, scoops in and scores. The thing that's impressed me most about Willie Warren is he is so under control. Five minutes in, that's his first shot. Jump shot won't go. Warren with the rebound. See, they don't really have an inside game right now, so Kansas is going to really force that ball to the paint. Out on the wing, lots of time to light up a three, and it's Taylor Griffin. How about that? That doesn't happen often. He's only three for seven on the season. 8-0 run by Oklahoma. Little magic in here. 10-6, Sooners on top. They are standing and cheering every breath. I'll tell you, Taylor Griffin just picked up a second foul. Well, some early fireworks. Willie Warren, the scoop. And then older brother Taylor from deep in the corner buries a three. And Blake Griffin tonight on the bench. Loving it. On sale now. NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March to ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light, The Difference is Drinkability, and in part by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. Blake Griffin bends over into the huddle in street clothes, and his older brother, Taylor, who uh, has got to kind of carry the banner tonight, just picked 
up a second foul, and we are barely five minutes into the ball game. And you can see that Jeff Capel has he has no alternative at this juncture. He's got to sit him for a bit. He's got to sit him, Ron. But at some point, unless Oklahoma gets out to a huge lead, I would consider playing him maybe after the 10-minute mark. A zone look from Oklahoma. Morningstar with a three, couldn't get it to go. Rebounded by Wright. Remember now, Juan Patillo has been an X-factor for Oklahoma, and he'll need to play big. There you see Juan Patillo, Ron. They took the red shirt off him on January 12th. He said to Jeff Capel, let me play, and he has been one of the most athletic inside players in the Big 12. Well, oh, he's added a, a regular situation for them that has just been dynamite. It was the night of the Texas game. That's right. He's, he decided, hey, I want to play. Inside, Austin Johnson now picks up the dribble, gets some help from Crocker. Crocker on the run. Nice soft touch. Now you remember a lot of people around the country earlier in the year said this is just the Blake Griffin show. The Sooners have a chance to put that to rest, that notion to rest tonight that it's not true. Well, I think they put part of it to rest on Saturday evening. And in fact, Rick Barnes, uh, the head coach of Texas, was quoted after the game as saying, hey, listen, they are a complete basketball team. They are very good, even without him. First foul called on Ryan Wright. So Blake Griffin sits, not easily or not well. He is dying to be on the floor. Morris, ball is blocked, and that's Patillo. Ron, he would start on virtually every team in this conference. Foul is going to be on Morningstar. It was before the shot. Patillo with that block just a moment ago. Austin Johnson. Got it into traffic, taken away by Aldridge, and he gets the outlet pass to Morningstar. Collins, long three, no. And Oklahoma has done a great job gang rebounding on those defensive boards. High screen, gets by, dishes it off to right, and he'll go to the line for a couple. And you're looking at a Willie Warren who is more than just a scorer. That was an outstanding pass. Take a look at how Willie Warren splits this double team. He gets low and he crosses right through the big fella, Cole Aldridge, and then the pretty dish to right as he heads to the lane. That's going to be the second foul on Marquise Morris. Knight's a guy, Ron, that transferred from UCLA, played on two Final Four teams for Ben Howland. And boy, do they need him to step up tonight. He played 23 minutes on Saturday down in Austin. Two fouls, as I just mentioned, on Marquise Morris. He has to go to the bench, and it means a 23, Mario Little, a junior, coming to KU this year. A junior college transfer, he has been up and down. The last couple of games has not played that many minutes. Pass deep in the corner. Tyrell Reed misses the three-pointer. Rebounded again by Willie Warren. Willie with a good game at both ends of the floor so far. Yeah, he and Johnson are really deep rebounding those deep, deep rebounds. Patillo had it there at point-blank range and didn't finish it. 12-6, Sooners lead. Reed has it blocked, and again, this time it was Wright who got a hand on it. They wind up scoring. I believe it was Mario, was it? Mario, Mario Little. Little. Yep. Yep. And, and they can play him at power forward versus Oklahoma at 6-5 because Oklahoma is small right now. That's the first basket for KU since the 18-10 mark. So they went about six minutes without scoring. Way outside, Crocker, not there. Aldrich takes it down for the Jayhawks. That's a tough shot by Crocker with a man in his face. 
Tyrell Reed. Here's Aldridge. Jump hook. Can't get it. Take it away, Oklahoma. And so many times on these trips, it has been one and out for the Jayhawks. A little unusual because they normally are more controlling than the offensive board. Well, I, I agree. I think you got to credit Oklahoma. They are rebounding with five players, knowing that they're shorthanded. Crocker against Reed. Lob pass. Aldridge prepared for that one. They were not going to allow the alley-oop. Well, coming up, our signature feature of the season. It's the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. Tonight, number 14 on ESPN Next. Buffalo Wild Wings presents the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. Number 14, Deion Jackson beats the buzzer. Under five seconds, Parker dishes inside. Jackson lost the handle, got it back, got the shot away, and he hit a three. Are you kidding me? That right there is something special. Well, be sure to tune in to ESPN on Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern, number two, UConn, number 10, Marquette, to see play number 13. And we will reveal the number one play, if you're wondering when, March the 15th. That's during the ACC Championship. Boy, that play-by-play -play guy had a good voice. <laughs> that was one of the most fun games I've ever done. And I'll tell you, I don't know who was more surprised, us or the gentleman who shot it. Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this ball game tonight, any surprises? KU got off to a good start, but Oklahoma just seized the opportunity. A little surprised that they haven't gone inside more to Aldridge and the Morris twins. And I think that's just the way Jeff Capel likes it. Keep them on the perimeter, KU. Shoot those jumpers. Oh, boy. Lee outside. Yep. He shot that from more Oklahoma. He is a special player, Ron. You know, you can take a coin flipping in the air. Tariq Evans of Memphis, Willie Warren. Reverse, couldn't get it. Inside, Morris, and Morris. Well, it's going to be Little who will be called for the foul. Watch this, Ron. This young man has been so special this year. He came in with a reputation of being a gunner, which was totally unfounded. And he's having a tremendous season. He's played a great second banana to Blake Griffin. I'm going to change what I said a moment ago. They signal 22 rather than 23 as he goes and gets it again. And it's Marcus Morris who picked up the foul. And Bill Self said, I've seen enough. 17 to 9, his ball club is down. And he calls a 30-second timeout. Oh, here's a reminder, tomorrow night, Super Tuesday continues the college basketball doubleheader on ESPN. First of all, a pair of teams positioning themselves for a tournament run as Penn State takes on Ohio State. Then, 9 o'clock, the two division leaders in the SEC, and this will be a great one, friend. Yes, sir. Florida, sitting on top of the East, faces off against number 18 LSU. They lead in the West. We did them earlier this year. And they are a well-coached ball yes, club continuing are. to get better. Yes, they are. Take, Ron, take a look at this kid. This young man went to North Crowley High School. He left to go to Oak Hill Academy. He thought the grass was greener on the other side. When he came back to North Crowley High School, a great program, his coach Tommy Brackle said, before we take you back, we're going to have to make sure your teammates are for it. And you know what, Ron? He talked to his teammates. He said, I'll come back more humble and I'll be a great teammate. He took his team to the state title game in Austin, and he's playing every bit as good as a freshman here at OU. Bounce pass too far in front. Tyshawn Taylor turned around to uh, Mr. Hall, one of the uh, officials, and said he was holding my jersey. That's the reason for the errant pass. Oklahoma basketball. Now this young man has really, really uh, captured the imagination of people here in Norman. Warren deep in the corner. Got oh, another man. one. Wow. Oh, they're loving it back in Fort Worth, I can tell you that. They've seen this act before. Stolen Cade Davis, and he was fouled. And another timeout being called by Bill Self. About two weeks ago, 
I talked to Bill Self about Willie Warren, and he said, Fran, I, rec I recruited him. He is the real deal. Well, two weeks later, he's lighting up the Jayhawks. Woo! <laughs> I tell you, if he's any further out, he's got to have either a, a media pass or a ticket, one of the two. He is way out on the edge. Uh, he's been really, really, uh, you know, Ron, he was an AAU phenom where he was so much better than all the kids his age group. And he got a little full of himself when he was younger. But going away from Fort Worth to Oak Hill and then back, he, he got humbled. One of his teammates said when Willie got up in front of the team to say, I want to come back and play on the team. And he started talking and giving a speech. And one of his teammates said, Willie, we've heard your talk before. Just show us on the court. And that's exactly what he's done the last year and a half. And what he said to him was actually a little stronger than that. But, it was. But he got the message. That's exactly right. Warren has scored 10 of OU's last 15 points. Boy, now if you're Jeff Capel, you can keep Taylor Griffin on the bench as long as possible with those two fouls. They don't need to use them just yet. That's a great point. It really takes a lot of pressure off everybody. Into the middle and Patillo tied up. And the possession error says it'll stay with Oklahoma. Ron Franklin, Fran Frischella, and Holly Rowe coming to you from a jam-packed Lloyd Noble Center on the campus of Oklahoma University. KU 11 and 1. Oklahoma 11 and 1. The only thing that is not in place tonight is Blake Griffin, the all-everything center. He is in street clothes on the bench because of a concussion he suffered on Saturday night. And right now, his teammates have not only taken over, they are ruling KU at this early stage of the ball game. It is 20 to 8. Holly Rowe, let's check in with you. Well, guys, one of the reasons you see Willie Warren really handling the ball so much right now is because Austin Johnson, the regular point guard on the bench, they've put a hot heating pack on that back. Ron, as you mentioned, he was getting treatment earlier today. His back has been a consistent problem for the last couple of years. It is acting up again tonight, and they've already put a hot pack on him. Thanks, Holly. Great hustle over there. You know what's interesting? As OU comes away with the ball, here's Patilla. Spins and scores. Well, Ron, Willie Warren and Patillo make this team so much more athletic than they used to be. And I think Patillo just picked up a foul away from the play. Well, this is great help side defense and a great job by Ryan Wright. And then Patillo, the young man that was ticketed to go to Oklahoma State before Sean Sutton was fired. Of course, he played at College of Southern Idaho, where Eddie Sutton founded the program. What a break for Jeff Capel. Collins. Crocker got out quickly on him. Inside Aldridge. Now Collins for three. No. And Patillo comes down with a very, very tall rebound. Now this kid here, Davis, who was in the ball game, gets it out on the wing. He can fill it up from three as well. Out of Elk City, Oklahoma. We watched him in the shoot around today. I'm not sure he missed a shot the first 30 minutes. I agree. Balling away, not there, taken down. Well, that's KU. A, yeah, that's a tough one. I would drive a Tyrell Reed right there. Aldridge, got it. See, you've got to make an attempt if you're Bill Self to go inside to Aldridge. But what's happening, Ron, is they're pressuring passes into the post so well. Austin Johnson is up, limping a bit, but he is coming back out, has the warm-up off, and the heating pad is no longer on his back. You, you remember the Sooners from a year ago? Ron, and they didn't have Willie Warren and Patillo. They're so much more athletic with those two guys right now. Well, a big hand for Willie Warren as he goes to the bench. Davis will stay in. Austin Johnson, as we mentioned, now back out on the floor for the Sooners. You see what Jeff Capel is doing, Ron. There'll be a TV timeout coming. So what does he do? Rest Willie Warren right now and buy him some extra minutes. Crocker along the baseline. Dished it off. I couldn't get the shot to go, but Wright will go to the free throw line. 
On Wednesday night, Judgment Week continues on ESPN. There's a pair of games. First of all, 7 o'clock Eastern, Coach Calhoun goes for number 18, uh, 800 as number two UConn takes on number 10 Marquette. And then at 9 Eastern, Maryland and Duke. And Duke is hoping that the same results don't occur. The worst loss for them in ACC history, 41 points the first time they met. It's all a part of Judgment Week, presented by Disney Parks. Well, in honor of the Oscars last night, Ron, we'll show you Marquette's uh, little ensemble cast. What a great year Jarrell McNeil has had. Wesley Matthews will make an NBA team. And of course, Dominique James has been around forever. He's an outstanding player. Buzz Williams will definitely get some Coach of the Year consideration nationally. He's done a wonderful job. Yes, he has. Yeah. No question. About to go under eight minutes to play, and Fran, your point comes out even more in the fact that with this lead by Oklahoma, they may not have to play Taylor Griffin at all in this first half. As Taylor knocks down the jumper from deep in that left corner. See, I like what Kansas did. They invited the double team on Aldridge and then swung it to the weak side. And Taylor's got five now, the freshman from Jersey City. He and Aldridge are the only two people with points as Aldridge comes away with a block. Aldridge with four and five for Taylor. And that's it so far. See, I would play through Aldridge inside out. Johnson works against Morningstar. And the feed inside, Morris misses it as they battle for it. Patillo again with a rebound. How about those hands? Austin Johnson off the glass. Patillo tried for the tip. Aldridge, rebound. If I'm Oklahoma right now, I'm a little more judicious with my shot selection. So we will take a timeout. It is Judgment Week, and right now, the judging being done, is it by Oklahoma or is it by KU? Dari Noka in studio, your sports center right now. The Colts have agreed to release wide receiver Marvin Harrison in a move that will save that team $6 million in salary cap space for next season. Harrison's second all-time in career catches. Georgetown's NCAA tournament chances may be all but gone after tonight's 18-point home loss to Louisville. Georgetown's lost 9 of 11. More details on SportsCenter after this game, guys. Alrighty, our situation, 7.09 left to play until halftime. As Taylor Griffin, who picked up two early fouls, is back on the floor. And for all the Oklahoma fans who might have stayed at home tonight saying, well, without Blake, it's going to be a tough assignment. I'm just going to watch it on television. You're missing a really wild scene here at this arena because, I mean, it's a whiteout, and this ball club is playing like a house of fire. And they're going to that 2-3 zone now with Griffin in foul trouble with two. And Orlando Allen, Ron, checking in the big fella from Cincinnati who rarely plays. So oh boy, you're right. Wow. Well, you need a little luck. He's got eight points now. And the interesting thing is Collins is 0 for the night and has two turnovers. So it's the, the freshman who has been erratic this year <laughs> sitting on top with eight points to keep KU in this ball game. Down by six now. Warren blocked by Aldridge, and Warren got away with it. He ran underneath Aldridge, but they did not call the foul. But a very dangerous play. But a great challenge by Cole Aldridge, averaging over two blocks a game. Two blocks by him yep. already. Yep, that's about, he's already over, heading towards his average. He is a, an excellent defensive center, one of the best in college basketball. Three seconds, down to two, and it was out of bounds, thrown away by Oklahoma. Holly Rowe, let's check in with you some very special guests. Well, I'm with Blake and Taylor Griffin's parents, Tommy and Gail, and you were both in Texas. You saw the, the blows your son took in that game. What was going through your mind at that point? Well, it wasn't, we didn't know that it, to the, what extent it was. But we saw several things that should have been called that wasn't called, like when he got hit in the chin and, and hit in the nose twice. I mean, if you're dividing the court like the three officials supposed to be, somebody should have been on top of that, especially down low. That's where everything is physical. And, you know, teams have been playing Blake so physically this year. How would you describe the kind of pounding he's taken? Absolutely. It's been really, really tough to watch. He's, um, he's taken it like a trooper, though, and he hadn't retaliated, and, and we're just so proud of the way he's responded to it. Tommy, you guys today probably awaiting the decision to see if he'd play. How did you feel about the decision to hold him out tonight? Well, 
that's the best thing for him. I mean, he's still a little bit, he has a headache. He has still a little bit of pressure. I mean, it's, one game is not that important. I mean, not for the rest of his life, no. So, yes, this, I think Coach Cable and the uh, staff did an excellent job in that, making that decision. And, Mom, for you, in his absence, Taylor has usually come up pretty big in games Blake didn't play in. How do you like how he's responding so far? Oh, great. That was my, that's been my prayer all day long because I knew that there was a possibility Blake wouldn't play. And I've just been praying that Taylor would step up like he always does. All right. Well, thank you for sharing with us, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Holly Rowe. I would only say we give a forecast from time to time by Mr. Frischella, and my forecast for the head coach at Oklahoma, the ice is getting thinner. I think I would be very careful, Jeff Gapel. Ball is tipped and almost stolen. Tyshawn Taylor got a hand up. Yeah, he made his point, I think, to Tom Eads. Watch Willie Warren drive baseline, Ron. Let's see if there's any contact. And this is where Jeff Capel was very, very upset. And he did get fouled. See, they missed it. And it leads to an opportunity. So Jeff Capel pleaded his case. Tom Eads didn't tee him. And now they can play the game. Well, misses. And rebounded again by Aldrich. What does Aldrich have as far as rebounds? He he has got six. Uh, what an improved player, Ron. Coming behind uh, some great players a year ago. Tyshawn Taylor. Yep. Hey, there's another freshman in this place tonight. Wow. Bob He's got Murray. 11 points. Two points for Morris. Uh, that's Marcus. And uh, six points for Aldridge. That's the all the scoring for KU tonight. And it's a one-point ball game. Stolen. Mark Keith Morris, and he was fouled by Austin Johnson. Interesting Second about foul on Johnson. Excuse me. Interesting about Tyshawn Taylor. He's averaging 10 points a game for the defending national champions. You know what he averaged in high school last year? 10 points a game. He played on a team with six Division I players that went undefeated and won the mythical national championship for Bob Hurley at St. Anthony's. Ronnie knows about pressure. Marcus Morris misses the first one. He'll get a second opportunity. He can tie this basketball game. All Oklahoma for about the last 10 minutes, and now KU has shown a lot of poise for a very young ball club to get right back in it. Kansas now up by a couple, 24-22. Where they have taken Oklahoma out of any offensive throw at all with great pressure. Forcing those passes out beyond the three-point line. Morningstar fouls. Crocker will go to the line for a couple. Bill Self's going to plead his case a little bit. Nine team fouls against the Jayhawks. There he is. Well, at the top of the Big 12 standings, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and really a round robin as far as uh, the games that are left, right? Absolutely. And you know what just stands out there? Three great coaching jobs this year. You think of what Jeff Capel's done and Mike Anderson at Missouri in his third year. And Bill Self doesn't get the credit for losing 80% of his scoring from a national championship team. That ended a 16-0 run by Kansas. You know what this game reminds me of tonight? Against Kansas State, Bill Self must have called four timeouts in the first six minutes of the ball game. And just kept pointing to the bench and telling guys on the floor, get over here and sit down, you go in the ball game, trying to find the right combination. And he kind of has done that tonight. No, it, it's a great point, Ron, especially with a young basketball team, because even though we're three quarters through the season, you know, we've seen Tyshawn Taylor struggle. We've seen Marquise and Marcus Moore struggle. But, you know, sooner or later, they're starting to grow up, and he's just pulling, pushing the right buttons. Yeah. Well, as I said, Collins is the man that you would expect 
who would have been controlling this ball game, but as it is, he hasn't scored this evening and has uh, turnovers already. And it is the freshman who is leading with 11 points and keeping his ball club right here in this contest. That foul is going to be on Quintrell Thomas. Let's take a timeout. 26 24, Kansas on top. Dory Noka in the studio coming up in moments of the UPS halftime report. Digger Phelps joins me talk about Georgetown. Is it their last stand? A virtual must win against Louisville. Digger going to give us his wake up call. Who gets the early call? Wake up or you may disappear from the tournament field in the end of an era in Indianapolis. Details on an impending departure. It's all coming up in minutes, guys. Jerry, thanks very much. 3.57 left until halftime. And uh, heading to the free throw line is uh, Patillo. Ten team fouls against Kansas. You know, you made that point, Ron. He doesn't have any points, and obviously the freshmen are picking up the slack. But that's a good thing for Bill Self. Sharon Collins has helped these young guys throughout the year mature. That's leadership. Now, can they go the whole game without him scoring a donut? Probably not. But I think it's a good sign that they've been able to take this lead without a lot of production from their best player. Now, that points will take it. Because then if he starts to light it up in the second half, they're even that much better off. Yep. Cole Aldridge, the jump hook. Little too low on the trajectory on that one. See, I'm going to go another minute or so with Taylor Griffin and get him out if I'm Jeff Capel. And let's check in again with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, you're talking about Sharon Collins not scoring. I just listened into the Kansas huddle, and Bill Self is actually drawing some things up for Collins. His message to his team, hey, we've got to drive that sucker. They want to start driving the basketball, get Collins more involved offensively. Okay, yep. we'll see if they drive that sucker, and they do, and it's Collins. You know His what? first two of the night at the 318 mark. Holly Rowe ought to be sitting over here analyzing this game because she was right on the money. And that's what he does so well, Ron. He goes Georgetown as well as anybody. Taylor almost creates a turnover. Kansas three-point lead. Warren, a little too strong. And Aldrich just grabbed his ninth rebound of the first half. And an offensive foul has been called against Quintrell Thomas and the freshman out of Newark. Simply was not watching as he backed up, heading down the court, just ran right over the Oklahoma player. And right now, Bill Self, since Quintrell doesn't play a whole lot of minutes, he's just going to leave him in as a live body with those two fouls. Under 245 to play until halftime. But I think. Well, uh, no, no, no. I think Oklahoma's got to do the same thing. They got to drive the ball, take it inside. Taylor Griffin. That's a nice unselfish play by Cade Davis. Yes. Cade had an open three and elected to get it closer to the basket. Now you remember what makes Kansas so good and Holly made the point. Sharon Collins and this backcourt do a great job of playing north south when they're at their best. And that's a reach in by Crawford. He was about to do just what you were saying. He was about to drive the lane. Let's go inside the play. Take a look at this, Ron. He's so hard to keep out of the paint. And he just wants to turn that corner and get into the lane. And this is what I mean. Great point guards play north-south. And you've got to force him to the sideline anytime there's a pick and roll situation. Don't let him turn it up to the rim. Collins. Converts the first one. So he'll get a second with the KU in the one and one. Last two ball games, 71 minutes, 44 points, no turnover. That's a young man that was well schooled at Crane Tech by Anthony Longstreet. Taught him the game and he taught it well. You know what I love about Collins? He can shoot the threes, just not a driver. Four points now. Oh. Willie Warren double dips it. Puts it up and in. Scooped one earlier. Seeing some nice moves on the part yeah. of him tonight. 12 points. We got a lot of guys driving north south tonight. Taylor short on the drive. And Quintrell Thomas goes down very hard. Third 
foul yep. on Taylor Griffin. And you know, Jeff Capel went probably a little too long. You heard me say it about three minutes. They were within four. It would have been a perfect opportunity to get Taylor Griffin out of this game. And by happenstance, he picks up his third. And you know, he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. I like the idea that they brought him back under the 10 minute mark, but there was a, a, a point in time where you don't test uh, fate. Well, tomorrow night, Super Tuesday continues a basketball doubleheader. First of all, a pair of teams positioning for the tournament. Penn State takes on Ohio State, what really amounts to a bubble game. Then at 9 o'clock, leaders in the east of the SEC, Florida, take on the leaders in the west, LSU. Super Tuesday presented by KFC. Ron, because Thomas went out with the injury, they're allowed to bring in a free throw shooter. So Bill Self brings in Mario Little, and he comes up empty. Missed the front end. Hey, by the way, John Adams, the coordinator of NCAA officiating, we had a chance to visit with him before the game. He's taking in this ball game tonight. And the three quality officials. Along the baseline, Patillo, and he throws it away. Well, when you drive baseline, you have to know where your bailouts are. Eighth turnover for Oklahoma. 121 showing on the clock until halftime. It's a one point game, Kansas 30 to 29. Thomas just picked up his third foul. Quintrell. And they had the ball under their basket because the ball was thrown away. <laughs> and last time, when it went out, a bounce at the other end of the floor. And then on a screen, he gets called for a moving screen. Okay, we're now told it actually was called on Reed, Tyrell Reed. See, Oklahoma's got to take care of the basketball. The second one on Reed. Collins wisely throws it off the feet of Patillo. Patillo has lost his mind temporarily. Take a look now. He'll attack inside. And then he chases that ball down, and he's just in the wrong place. But he needs to settle down just a little bit. This may be one of the biggest spots he's played in all year because he's got so little experience in the Big 12. Well, and Fran with the tournament coming up. Going to have to learn and learn quickly, isn't he? Oh, you're right. You're right. He's a very big factor in their success if he if he plays under control. Collins, they wanted Aldrich inside. Shot clock is about to hit 10. Tyshawn Taylor fouled by Willie Warren. It's going to be a three-shot foul. Wow. Well, Tyshawn Taylor has really come up big. Ron, we've seen him play up and down. You mentioned that there have been times this year where he's driven the coaching staff crazy. But he, <laughs> you see he gets fouled right there. But if you grow up in Jersey City and play for Bob Hurley, this kind of pressure, I'm telling you, is nothing. Just walk the streets of Jersey City and survive, and you're okay. First one on the way as he will get three. Yeah, there was one ball game uh, this <laughs> year. I'm not even going to say which one it was, but with uh, less than six minutes having been played, Tyshawn got, I'm almost sure it was, it was, I know, his fifth turnover. And I looked over at Bill Self, and he was doing everything but pulling his hair out. You mean the UMass game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, you know, Al McGuire said the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. That's but, right. Hey. This is a very young basketball team. And they have a better record right now than the team in the Big 12 than the team that won the national title a year ago with three losses in conference. Four point lead, Kansas. We're about to go into 30 seconds, and we do right now. Warren out front as he yo yo's the basketball. Collins keeping a closer eye on him. Gets a screen out high by Patillo, and they're going to call a moving screen yep. on Patillo. His second foul. Wow. 
This is, take a look, Ron. This is just an experience. You must come to a stop. Now watch Patillo. He's going to keep moving, and then he dips that left shoulder into the defender, and that's a no-no this year. You just have to hold your ground. Willie Warren is good enough to get by those guys without any illegal intervention on the part of Patillo. Omar Larry, number 11, a senior out of Portland, Oregon, comes into the ball game for this final 10 seconds. Here comes the play. Collins out in the corner. Tyrell Reed got it with about one second on the clock. And as a result, the Jayhawks will go to the locker room with a 36 to 29 lead. Watch the set play. You'll see the up screen by Aldridge, and that frees Tyrell Reed. That's the kind of coaching Bill Self has done this season. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Coach Capo, the real question was, how would you guys adapt offensively without Blake in this first half? How do you think your guys did? Did okay. Turnovers and missed free throws. That's what's killing us right now. If we do a better job of value in the basketball, get movement, and we got to the foul line some, but I know we've missed at least six. We have to do a better job in those two areas. All right, thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks, Holly. 36-29, our halftime score. Now let's join Darry Noka and Digger Phelps for the UPS Halftime Report. By Bud Light, all a part of Judgment Week on ESPN. And tonight here at the Lloyd Noble Center at halftime, 36-29. to Kansas uh, has clawed their way back on top. Blake Griffin suffered a concussion on Saturday night down in Austin against Texas and is on the bench in street clothes tonight. So Ron Franklin along with uh, Brand for Shellup. And as we get started here in the second half, I have to say in honor of the Academy Awards last night, we have a special feature for you at halftime. Yeah, we're gonna have to give out some some Frannies tonight, Ron. And at first, first uh, award is best director. And that's Sharon Collins, the outstanding point guard for the Jayhawks. Didn't score a lot, but ran that team. Best picture, the blocks of Juan Patillo. Of course, original score we're going to give to Willie Warren. Take a look at this shake and bake. Able to get into the lane off the dribble. And in an upset, Ron, best leading man, the freshman, Tyshawn Taylor, has had a huge first half. Yeah, and, a, and a little luck along the way. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> when the magic works, it really works. Kind of kissed that one off. I'm sure he called it. So let's see what can happen here. The Sooners off to a big lead at a time in the first half. They led by as many as 14 points. Collins just inside the three-point line misses. And Wright is fouled as he grabs the rebound. Here are the first half stats. But one of the things that got away from the Sooners was the turnovers, Ron. They had 10 turnovers. They lost their composure, I thought, a little bit down the stretch of that first half. That's the third foul on Marcus Morris. The other thing you and I talked about as we looked at the sheet just before we went on, only one offensive rebound for Oklahoma in the entire first half, and that's normally a board that they dominate because of Blake. Well, that's right. And you notice also they run their offense through Blake so much. He's really their de facto point guard, and they don't have that luxury tonight. Nice dish. Wright was not ready for it, and finally taken away by Kansas. Marcus Morris got hit in the face as he got the rebound. Tyrell Reed not there. Johnson rebound. Well, Wright is going to have to give Jeff Capel some more offense because they're putting that ball on the money inside and he's got to be ready to catch those passes. And let's check in quickly with Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Blake Griffin is sitting out, guys. Not only do they miss his points and rebounding, but he is the emotional leader of this team. He is one of the most intense college basketball players going. Coming into the tunnel, just bringing his team out onto the floor, I saw him pull Willie Warren aside, talk to him privately, tell him he has to get this team going. It's going to be up to Willie, a freshman, to be the leader out on the floor right now. If anything, guys, what they miss right now is Blake Griffin's unwillingness to back down. Holly, thanks so much. That is Morningstar's foul, and it is three on him. Interestingly, he has gone to the bench, and also Tyrell Reed has gone to the bench. So Bill Self continues to run players in and out of this ball game until he finds the mix that he wants and likes. And Morningstar has been one of Bill Self's best defenders as well. 
Well, you see, they open the second half with Crocker yep. guarding Tyshawn Taylor. I think you'll see more dribble drives by Sharon Collins, Ron. Morris not there. Aldrich tips the ball away. Collins long three. He got it. I'll tell you, Aldridge got away with just a slight nudge, but he is 6'11 as well and an outstanding offensive rebounder. Eight-point lead, Kansas. About to have played the first two minutes of the second half. And Collins guarding Willie Warren now, so that's going to be a matchup of two Bulldogs. <laughs> that's a great way to put it. And a whistle and a foul. And it looks like uh, Travis Relliford is first. Take a look at this, Ron. Now watch the shot goes up and a long rebound at Karam's long. Uh, he did get a little away with a little nudge, but more impressively, Sharon Collins knocks down that shot. Aldrich, that's double figures. That's 11 rebounds for him now. Collins fading away, can't get the shooter's roll. And the foul inside is called on Oklahoma. And let's see exactly which number they're pointing to. I think it's Crocker, Ron. It, it, yep. That's his second. I, I, I like this now. Uh, if you're a Sooner fan, you don't like it. But I like the fact that the officials are blowing the whistle early and often to set the tempo of this second half. Aldrich needs two more points, and he's double-double for the night. You got two stars on the floor for Kansas. One on the offensive end, one on the defensive end. Collins couldn't get it. Aldrich fights for it. Misses on the follow. Take a look at Aldrich now, Ron. Watch his position inside. Shot goes up. That length, that 6'11 frame, doesn't get it to go, but he battles on the glass. Three fouls on Marcus Morris. Too much dribbling, lost it in traffic, and here's Taylor who will jam it home. And the ball hit him in the head as he went underneath the basket, and he comes back up the floor with a big smile on his face. You know, we've watched Oklahoma play so much this year, and so much of the offense has gone through Griffin in the low post run because he's such a great passer. And that is totally not in their repertoire tonight. There's nobody inside that can make those plays passing out that Blake can make. Shot clock is at seven. The ball tipped by Collins on the floor. Tyshawn Taylor grabs it and gets it back to Aldridge. Collins with another really good defensive play. Sixteen and a half minutes to play in our ball game. Both teams 11 and one. Aldridge misses on the turnaround jumper. And Bill Self has no problem with that play right there because the big fella got a good look. Warren blocked by Aldridge. Well, that's the that's the one guy that Jeff Capel has that can create offense for himself. Take a look at this shake and bake. He's able to get by Aldridge, get to the other side of the rim, and get himself to the line. Well, the wise thing that he did, he knew he'd picked up the foul, so he didn't. Give him an opportunity for a three point play. The person who has got to step up and turn it on for Oklahoma, Austin Johnson, they are so accustomed to getting big games and big points from him. Only two in the first 20 minutes. It's true, but you know, think about watching them play, Ron. Johnson and Crocker get so many shots because of the double teams yeah. inside. You have talked about yeah. that all year long. You said, I would love to play one of those two positions <laughs> yes. with uh, Blake Griffin here at Oklahoma because you're always going to be open. Relford hands it off to Taylor. And he dishes. Morris will score. That is Markeith Morris. First two points for him. Well, both of the twins have really stepped up down the stretch of this Big 12 season. Taylor Griffin. And got it. Fouled by Mario Little. So let's take a timeout. 15-51 left in our ball game. And take a look at older brother Taylor Griffin. 
as he will get the shot to go with the little shooter's touch. Dorian Oka, Digger Phelps in studio. You just have to see this. Sixers and Nets. Andre Iguodala makes a free throw. Nets down one. Last chance. 1.8. Devin Harris loses it. Gets it. Shoots it. Hits it, Digger. <laughs> Watch the replay of this. He grabs a loose ball. The other guy say, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Watch the ball. Game's oh, over. You lose. That's win. Back to you guys. All righty. <laughs> Boy, this one has turned into a real dogfight inside. I mean, it is really physical. Markeith Morris finally wound up with the hoop. He's got four points. And it looks as though Travis Relford will have just picked up his second foul of the evening. A lot of folks getting playing time tonight in this one. If you look out there right now for the, the guys in blue, Ron, three freshmen and then the two veterans. And there's a, speaking Nick, of veterans. Nick Collison, and it didn't take him long to find his Jayhawk hat tonight rather than his Thunder hat. Tomorrow night, the Thunder will take on the Lakers here in Oklahoma City. Kevin Durant has really heated up the last month of this season. Second year player from the University of Texas. About to go under 15 minutes to play in our ball game. Both teams 11 and 1 in conference play. Collins out on the wing. Taylor wide open. Not there. And Warren got away with an over the back on that one. So a, a few not necessarily look the other way but uh, rather than Calling uh, a couple that could have been whistled here in the second half. Not. Ball block. And again, it's Marquise Morris. At the other end, Tanner missed the dunk. And Wright walked up on him. <laughs> the ball came back down, and uh, Wright will pick up the foul. And that is three on him. You know, the more I watch Cole Aldridge run, you know, he reminds me of Kevin McCann. You know, he's got, he's, he's a little bit gangly, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Unorthodox would be a better way to put it. But he's got length. He keeps the ball high. He's a terrific rebounder. You got to go all the way back to the early 80s now. Minnesota, late 70s. Welford. And he was fouled. And Aldridge is certainly having his way tonight with this young man out. There's the matchup of the two double double guys. I started to say, you know, I can't wait to see that matchup if it happens at the uh, Big 12 tournament this year because. Uh, <laughs> Aldrich has gone up against some good people this year and, and he not only maintains his own he is a tough customer himself just like Blake Griffin. I remember a year ago he only played about eight minutes a game but he backed up three very good post players and it was in the national semifinal where he really flummoxed Tyler Hansborough in that Kansas win over North Carolina. 12 point lead Kansas 48 36. See, Sharon Collins now is just putting the clamp down on Willie Warren. And it's more because Oklahoma can't find him. Patillo, not there. Aldrich with still another rebound. And that is a total of 15 for him. He's got a double-double with the 10 points. Morris, no. Taylor Griffin rebounds. See if the Sooners can get something going offensively. Got a quick release that time. And Aldridge, wow, count him up. 16 rebounds now. Because Oklahoma's not getting any offense, I think Willie Warren now feels like he's got to start to take some shots when they occur. That was a quick one. What can they do, Fran? That was a very quick it, shot. It was, Ron. I got to get stops and get out of transition. See, right now there's no resistance inside. And this guy... You talk about how much he's improved. Of course, we've watched it over the first two years of his career. Well, Cole Aldridge, young man from Bloomington, Minnesota. That's the home of Kevin McHale. And a pretty good imitation right here. The big guy scoring down low. Life, 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 lemonade, cameras, ice, ice. After the game.
game on SportsCenter, how Blake Griffin's injury might impact Oklahoma's tournament run, some teams you might see in the tournament you probably haven't seen yet, and why Donovan McNabb is not ready to commit to Philly next. Dari Noka in studio with your Sports Center right now. The Colts have agreed to release wide receiver Marvin Harrison in a move that will save the team $6 million in salary cap space for next season. And Georgetown's NCAA tournament chances may be all but gone after tonight's 18 point home loss to Louisville. Georgetown's lost 9 of 11. More details on Sports Center after OUK, you guys. Dari, 13 18 left in our ball game, 50 to 36. And so that is 28 points. Oh, uh, Kansas was down 14 points at just about the 10 minute mark. And so 28 points more they have put on the board than the Sooners. Warren side, nice play call off the bench, and they couldn't convert it. You know, Ron, coaches have a scoreboard and a clock in their heads, and we were talking about this at the break. It's now a 42 14 run, and it's been really, really geared by great defense by Kansas. Morris fouled by Patillo. Holly Rowe, let's check with you. Oklahoma coach Jeff Cable just told his team in the huddle, the bottom line, guys, it comes down to toughness. Toughness is the ability to think. Toughness is the ability to stay together through this adversity. He said just like Kansas was down and came back in the first half, now it's our turn. We have to be the tougher team here. Now it's our turn. Okay, Holly. I, you know, it's interesting, both coaches, there has been quite a chess match going on, but the number of people that have played tonight for uh, Kansas is uh, is really surprising in a game like this. For instance, uh, Pondrell Thomas uh, has been, you know, on the floor for a yeah. lot of this basketball game. He was a very good high school player at St. Pat's in New Jersey, a school that produced Al Harrington. He hadn't got as much uh, opportunity as the Morris Twins this year, Ron, but he was a very highly sought-after player. Here he goes. Collins, and it's stolen by Crocker. Johnson left alone, and Austin bangs it hard off the back of him. He'll take another one. And this time, he hit the side of the glass. Johnson comes back with it. Touched last by Relford. It will be Oklahoma basketball, 26 seconds on the clock. I am so impressed with the improvement of this team, Ron. We did, we did that game in December when they UMass. lost to UMass. And you look at Kansas with 80% of their scoring and rebounding gone. And these guys are 22 and 5 and are making a statement tonight. And they only have. They have 10 freshmen and sophomores on this club. Tries for the jam. Will not get it. But Patillo is going to go to the free throw line. That is the eighth team foul on KU. Wednesday night judgment week continues on ESPN. Couple of games, 7 o'clock Eastern. Coach Calhoun tries to make it win number 800. Number two, UConn takes on number 10, Marquette. Then at 9 Eastern, Maryland. Can they complete the run that they had last time against Duke, who's number seven? They defeated them by 41. Wednesday night hoops presented by Disney Parks, a part of Judgment Week. Well, Maryland could really use that win after knocking off North Carolina on Saturday. To Vasquez with a yeah, outstanding game. ball game. Yep, Rivas Vasquez, little 1-3-1 pressure. Kansas expected to see this. They haven't used this defense very much. Go back to Kansas State on the road, and it really won the ball game for them. Collins way outside, knocks down the three. That's a veteran, Ron. This guy already has 90 plus wins in his career and a national title. Did you see Jeff Cable? He got up and just shook his head as yep. if to say it was working exactly the way we wanted it to. And then he shoots a 24 footer and knocks it down. Well, they didn't have a chance to really work on that offense today because they expected Blake Griffin to play. You don't see that 1 3 1 very often, but Bill Self's teams don't get fooled very often. Take a look at this ball movement back and forth. And who else? Sharon Collins knocks it down.
game on SportsCenter, how Blake Griffin's injury might impact Oklahoma's tournament run, some teams you might see in the tournament you probably haven't seen yet, and why Donovan McNabb is not ready to commit to Philly next. So we are back at 54-38, and an offensive foul was called on this play. And as we went to break, Jeff Capel extremely ang angry over the call. Take a look yourself. Right. And, it, and it's a close call, Ron. Now, Jeff Capel, when they went to the timeout, he thought it was a block. He was surprised it was a charge. It was a very close call. And as I mentioned to you during the break, I really believe this, this officiating crew, they'll let Jeff Capel get away with a little more woofing than normal because he doesn't do it often and he knows that his team is shorthanded. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's good psycho, psychology of officiating right now. They have this game totally under control for now. Here's, <laughs> here's Aldridge, and that's going to be... Now that, that's one that, now the crowd doesn't like it, but he's got yeah. both hands on him. I like this. You know, you've heard me say this all year. Officials need to blow the whistle more. That's the fourth foul now on Ryan Wright, but the game is too physical. They've done a good job tonight of blowing their whistle. Bouncer inside. Marquise Morris. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And see, they're not doubling Aldridge or Morris, Ron. Marquise so, is coming off a really good ball game against uh, Nebraska. Yes, so putting back-to-back yeah. -back efforts together, his brother has been playing maybe a tad more than he has. But uh, Bill Self has got to be smiling big time about those two guys. You know, if Marcus plays a few more minutes, I would just switch jerseys every now and then. Uh, you know, because Bill Self told me early in the year, he just calls them twins. He just said, hey, twin, get in the game. <laughs> Both of those guys verbally committed to Memphis. Boy, that's another rebound. I tell you, Aldridge is now at 17. We're running out of space on the stat sheet over here. Career high is 18, so I'd say there's a pretty good chance that he might get it. That's going to be goals ending. Called against Wright. And this is an easy call, but it, it, it underscores what Kansas has done all year. That ability to get all the way to the rim off the dribble. And how much did we see that in the last few years with guys like Robinson and Chalmers going to the rim? You know, Ron, the thing that strikes me about Oklahoma is they're so reliant on throwing the ball into Griffin. Not to score, but to run their offense through him. They really haven't been able to get any, any kind of rhythm offensively with the big guy out tonight. Patillo, nice move, strong into the baseline. Aldrich couldn't do anything about it. Had to let him go up and score it. Skip pass, had him open. Rufford decided better than uh, take the shot. He had moved inside the three-point line. Relford, crossover, offensive foul. Yep, that's an easy one. That's Relford's strength usually. That's his third. But Relford is not a jump shooter, so he's going to put it on the deck more often than not. Here's what's on the line tonight. 11-1 and one against 11-1. and one. Right now, Kansas in a position with an 18-point lead to make their season record at 12-1, and one, followed by Missouri, K-State, and Texas. And who said all the new faces KU was going to finish in the middle of the pack? Griffin fouled on the way to the basket. Well, speaking of tournament resumes, some other clubs in the Big 12. How about Texas at 18 and 8? Yep, the biggest thing that jumps out to me, and I mentioned yesterday, Ron, that uh, we had that uh, meeting with the basketball committee, all of us ESPN guys up in Bristol, and a thing that jumps out to me is six wins for Texas over the, the RPI top 50. Well, that's our look at the ladders tournament resume. Of course, Rick Barnes and his club will have a chance to add another win on Wednesday night at home against Texas Tech team that's young and struggling. Second one, got that one. And it's 10 team fouls on KU. And that happened with just barely over 10 minutes played in the second half. Now, it may not matter much tonight the way o OU has shot their free throws. Taylor Griffin stolen at the other end. 
Reverse blocked by Aldridge, and a tie ball. It's going to stay in this direction. Boy, does he have great timing or what? He never leaves his feet until the offensive player leaves his. Watch him stay on the ground. We will, we'll show you. We'll show you that replay later. But Ronnie's he was three-time Mr. Defensive Player of the Year in Minnesota, and he's done nothing but show us how good he is here. Oh, Willie Warren who had to climb the ladder as he climbed up the front of uh, Big Cold Aldrich's jersey. 15-point ball game, and a timeout is called by Morningstar for KU. So with 9:04 to play. 58-43. For those of you who might have joined us late, Blake Griffin on Saturday night down in Austin suffered a concussion. And here he is tonight on the bench and unable to play in this ball game. And both the noise and the light bothersome after a concussion. And I, I think uh, you add in the way Oklahoma has played the last 15 or so minutes, and that would tend to make you give you an excedrin headache as well. <laughs> well, it's been tough. When you look at the numbers that he had uh, that Fran was talking about, 31 and 40, 31 minutes. 23 rebounds and 40 points. Crowd trying to get this ball club to come alive and do it again. Offensive foul is called against Markeith Morris. That's number four on him. Bill Self trying to go right inside with uh, Morris and Aldridge. Oklahoma's not double teaming the low post, so they're going to keep attacking. Willie Warren. Ball tipped away. I think Morningstar is the one who got a hand on it, and it's out of bounds off Warren. KU basketball. That's a heads-up play by Brady Morningstar. He's going to pick him up full court here. Morningstar read the rhythm of Warren's dribble into a shot and put his hand right where the ball came up. Tyrell Reed turns it over. Patillo got it. Collins gets a very short break. Bill Self said, I want you back on the floor. Morningstar lost the ball, but Davis fouled him. First foul on him. And at team fouls, that is now seven against Oklahoma. Sharon comes back in. And Bill Self's no dummy. He's not going to give this crowd a chance to really ratchet it up without his leader on the floor. Well. Tyrell has, has been the guy who has hit the big shots. There's no doubt about yes. it. He's hit more big shots this year than any other player on this team. As you see, Joe goes over to talk to him and, and, and do a little coaching there with him. But normally he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And well, when that starts to happen, then and he's, he's not really a point guard. You know, Ron, both, yeah. both Morningstar and Reed really, they're good, they're good ball handlers, but you know, I don't know if you want them handling the ball full time against the kind of pressure that Oklahoma can uh, run at you. Should have completed his name. Joe Dooley, of course, yep. the assistant coach who was over coaching his player. Collins may have just picked up the foul. He did. But well, here are the guys that were on the spot tonight. Well, and we, you know, we talk about it when you watch Oklahoma play. Johnson, Warren, and Crocker. Not so much Warren, but Crocker and Austin Johnson get their open opportunities playing off of Blake Griffin. Willie Warren is the only one of those three players, Ron, that can get his own shot off He can dribble. create. Yes. He can either pick up the assist or take it to the basket himself. See Austin Johnson sitting on the bench and getting an opportunity for a breather. We documented back in the first half, he had about a 30-minute treatment with heat on his back just to get it loose so he could come out and warm up. Well, I think trainer Alex Brown is let it over, over the four years of Austin Johnson's career. I'll tell you, Alex has been really busy for the last 48 yeah. hours. Pressure on Morris. And he was forced out of bounds. Patillo picks up a silly foul. Wow. Yeah, they use fortunate there. They are. They are. But you know what you like about that? The referee saw a foul, called it, didn't let the crowd 
sway him one way or another. I used to tell officials when we went on the road, Ron, hey, we've been the, if we're the better team, I want to win the game. Just to let them know that, you know, we've been like Bill Self now for the last 20 minutes. Kansas has been the better team. Well, there was Curtis Shaw who made the call. And we both have known Curtis for a very long time. And when he sees a foul, he's going to call it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's the home folks or the visiting folks. Very true. Coaches should want consistency from the first minute to the last minute when it comes to the three Z group. Back to a 15 point lead for Kansas. You know they're doing it, Ron, and Collins only has a quiet 10 points. Well, guess who? Omar Weary, very dependable. Stolen. Gabe Davis. The lead is cut to nine. You know what's funny? Oklahoma played man to man. They played a little bit of zone. They went to a little 1 3 1 half court trap. And now they've gone to full court pressure out of desperation. Take a look. Here's the steal. Weary knocks it loose. Davis heads to the other end. And you and I both know, Ron, that when he gets the open look, he's just hey. as capable of anybody on that court burying a three. You know, I was about to say, it seems to me as though that as well as Cade can shoot, you might even decoy with uh, with Willie Warren and skip past getting the ball. If you give him just half a breath, as you saw there, the young man is capable of shooting from 25 and making it. You can see now Oklahoma will definitely come with a little more pressure. And if you look at this lineup, it's a small lineup, but a quick lineup. It's what we talked about. This is a more athletic Sooner team than a year ago. Morning Star. Brady will get it across and get it off to Taylor. What a great lesson for Kansas now to play with this lead on the road with a young group. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Taylor back to Morningstar. Collins for three. No. Here's Leary. And he had a man out open on the wing, and Patillo didn't see him in time. Bounce pass. That was kicked by Ulrich. Yep. Warren came right back up with it. Leary. Rebound to Texas. And here's uh -oh. Kay Davis. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 9-0 run. What did I tell you? <laughs> I give the young man the basketball. Aldrich strong to the basket and was fouled. Six-point game. Wow. And they are standing again and cheering here in Norman. They led by 14. Then they trailed by 14. Right now, 62-56. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light, the difference is drinkability, and in part by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And Cisco, welcome to the human network. So we are back. Cade Davis, six points, two for two from beyond the arc. It's a 9-0 run for Oklahoma, the last one minute and 12 seconds. You mentioned a young man from Elk City, Oklahoma, west of Oklahoma City. Only a sophomore came in in the same recruiting class as in-state rival Blake Griffin. And he has come up big. Woo! Tell this right now, the young man from Elk City is really a popular figure in the Lloyd Noble Center right now. <laughs> he was already popular in Elk City. Aldrich, first one, got it. Cole Aldrich, sometimes it's unfair because people think he is older 
and maybe should even do more, but he is only a sophomore, and he's about as cool, poised, and collected as you're going to find for a sophomore. Yeah, you're right. Comes in shooting 77% from the line, which is a terrific percentage for a big fella. Willie Warren got it to go. Now they keep chipping away. Remember, they trailed by 20 this half. And Ron, we were in Columbia when Kansas gave away that 14 point lead. Similar situation with the pressure. You're right. Six point ball game, 6 10 left to play. Oklahoma 11 and 1. Kansas 11 and 1 in conference play. He's going to walk out of here the leader. Almost stolen on a great hustle by Griffith. Taylor Griffith, the senior older brother of Blake Griffith. And this crowd giving him a standing ovation as you look at his parents. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, if, whether they win the game or not, this game will help Oklahoma when Blake Griffin comes back because of the way this team has stepped up without him. Collins, no, but he was fouled. Well, tomorrow night, Super Tuesday, college doubleheader. First of all, a pair of teams that it's almost like a bubble game. Penn State takes on Ohio State. That at 9 o'clock in the SEC, Florida, they lead the East against LSU, who leads the West. Something's got to give there. 9 Eastern Super Tuesday, presented by KFC. And, of course, it's all part of Judgment Week. Fouls on O'Leary. Leary picks up his first. Omar Leary, a senior out of Portland. Well, they've got the right guy Bill Self does on the line. Collins has made 35 threes in a row earlier this Big 12 season. Second one on the way. And he didn't score much in the first half, but it looks as though that point total is going to go up plenty. If they keep fouling him, he'll swish him all night. Had his string broken at Missouri. Yep, that's right. Griffin oh, kisses yeah. it off the glass a little too hard. And I think it's going to be Marcus Morris, and that's foul number four. Good set play right there out of the out of the timeout. A little pick and roll with a slip by Taylor Griffin. You know, as he takes a deep breath, a word of congratulations to a friend of mine, Skeet Reese, who won the Bassmasters Classic yesterday up in uh, Shreveport. Uh, what a year for him. He also has under his belt anger of the year. Skeet, congratulations, partner. You got the two big trophies sitting on your mantle in the state of California now. That is super. Great job. You told me he's got good hands, right? You can't use that net. <laughs> no, no net. And you see the family looking on and watching Taylor Griffin as uh, this Oklahoma ball club tries to claw their way back into this one. And there's little brother Blake concussion on Saturday couldn't play in this one and Collins got tripped by Warren and could not receive the pass at the other end Warren dishes blocked by Aldrich now Bill South is calling is asking and I have to agree even if your feet become entangled that's right now let's see it Ron because it happened right in front of us and I didn't get a good look but take a look at this balls up the floor no he fell Good no call. I beg your pardon. He lost his balance. I thought that they had tangled feet, which would have been a foul. Okay, this guy Patillo, he started off his career as a very good foul shooter. Strange little hitch in his uh, free throw shooting, but but he makes it count. Morningstar off to Aldrich. If you're Oklahoma right now, you still pressure. But you don't have to take as many chances and open up the floor for Collins because it's now a possession by possession game. Collins passed up the three as Patillo had moved out on him and now he'll take it. Long three, he got it. Right there, Ron, that's leadership. Quiet the crowd. Seven point ball game, 69 62. Kansas. Under five minutes to play. Taylor Griffin out on the wing. Kate Davis, another one. Boy, how about this crowd? Inside. Morris. 
Davis. Too hard. Tip up. Wouldn't go. Omar Leary comes away, Oklahoma. Davis had the ball stripped by Morningstar. Remember, remember before, Morningstar was able to gauge the rhythm of Willie Warren's jump shot. He did the same thing here. He just put his hand at Davis's waist. Ron Franklin, Fran Frischella, Holly Rowe, great to have you along. Sports Center is coming up immediately following the ball game as a whistle and a foul on the inbounds pass, and it's on Morningstar. And he may, he may be gone, Ron. That's his fourth. Davis misses the first. Wow. How do you all the pressure? <laughs> How do you make all those threes? You know, he, he didn't miss a free throw as a freshman. 24 for 24. Bill Self comes up and uh, puts his hands on Morningstar's shoulder. Does some uh, coaching. He missed that one as well. Wow. Well, that is a bad break. He's a 73% shooter, but I mentioned he went through the entire year last year. Not missing a free throw. Bill Patillo reaches in. Sports Center coming up immediately following this ball game. 409 remaining. And if you have just joined us, Blake Griffin unable to play tonight because of a concussion. Suffered Saturday night down in Austin against the University of Texas. This game tonight, what's on the line? They're both 11 and 1, Kansas and Oklahoma. And right now it's KU with a four point lead. Just over four minutes to play. Ron, that foul by Patillo was exactly what I was talking about a few moments ago. You don't need to take chances when you've got back into this game. He fouls Tyshawn Taylor 50 feet from the basket. Tyshawn Taylor with 22 points tonight. Well, 23 is the high water mark for Taylor this year. Only just within a breathing distance there of that. And the ball, bad pass, tipped away, and it goes back to Aldridge. Warren tried to thread the needle. No room. At the other end. Kate Davis with a block. Omar Leary, the southpaw, rings it around and scores a three. 71-68. Omar Leary reminds me of Avery Johnson. Little left-hander with a set shot. This is as close as our game has been since back at 32-29, back before halftime. Now you got to play with defensive patience. You're back in the ball game. Collins for three. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have an answer for you? Oh, wow. wow. These young players of Kansas, they've got Superman on their side, and that gives you confidence. Just looked over here and just started laughing. <laughs> when a guy's gonna shoot it that well from that far out, what can you do? <laughs> All right, let's look at Omar oh, Leary's man. three first. I'm gonna get dizzy going back and forth. <laughs> Omar Leary, Mr. Dependable. Bill Self doesn't call on him. Excuse me, Capel doesn't call on him often. But when he does, he usually delivers. Collins? Kate Davis is all <laughs> over him. He can't get any closer without a foul. And then look at this from Warren. Oh, he froze Jerron Collins, who never thought he would pull up. What was that, 23 feet? Uh, I'd say so. 24. <laughs> wow. 74-71, three-point ball game. 2.58 remaining. Who's going to leave here all in the next few minutes with the lead in the Big 12 Conference? Both 11 and 1. Well, this game, regardless of what happens, will give Oklahoma so much confidence. And in fact, if Kansas were to win, obviously a win on the road over this Oklahoma team would help them as well. Cole Aldridge gets it back to Tyrell Reed. And Reed against Cade Davis. See, if you're Oklahoma right now, you do not foul. Make Kansas take a tough shot. And remember, Collins loves to play north-south right here. Collins 
looks up at the clock. It's now at 10. He's going to take another three, <laughs> and for good reason. Willie Warren wants the ball back. Look at this. Warren drives the lane. He is called for an offensive foul. So let's take a timeout. And as we go to break, take one more look at Collins. We thought he didn't score much in the first half, only four. With this, he has 21. I was thinking maybe I could meet up with Paige. Have fun. If the people. Oh, no, no. Please help me! Who hurt your daughter. Mary! Who did this to you? We're in your home. They're here. Would you ever let them leave? <laughs> the last house on the left. You want to hear what I did to your daughter? <laughs> if you think about it, this is what makes the ladders different from other job search sites. We only work with the big talent. Welcome to The Ladders, a premium job site for only 100K plus jobs and only 100K plus talent. Judgment Week all week long. And if this is any indication of what we've got in store, you don't want to miss any of it. By the way, for the Kansas Jayhawks in this game tonight, 16 assists on 24 made baskets. <laughs> 20 seconds on the shot clock. Bill Self. Once his ball club will run just as much time down as they can. Great point, Ron. They're just milking the clock. And a foul against Omar Leary. Holly Rowe, let's check with you. What do you got for us? Well, guys, during that last timeout, Jeff Capel told his team they've got to get the basketball out of Kansas guard Sharon Collins' hands. They're going to play Willie Warren on him. They want Willie to really run at him, get after him, and then play zone behind. As you can see, Sharon Collins is killing him. They've just got to get the ball away from him. Well, Holly, it, it's, it's interesting that we talk about it. He did everything except score many points in the first half with a total of four. And now he's got 21 on the night. And all five of his field goals in the second half, Holly, are three-pointers. And you remember, Ron, it, it meant nothing to me that he had no field goals. Yeah, you said be, Because the other guys pick up the slack, but he knows when to take over a ball game. That was passed on to him by the great players that were here before him. Inside, Patillo misses the dunk, and the ball is saved. Well, he had that opportunity. Well, the round robin in the Big 12, and this is what it's going to come down to. Between Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri, and here are those games and on the schedule. Kansas now, Ron, you'd have to say, is in the driver's seat with Missouri coming to Lawrence. Never an easy place for a border war game if you're a Tiger. Taylor bends the knees and misses. Well, he needs one point to collect a new personal best. He's at 23. That's his high water mark. See if he can break it right here. And he misses. Aldrich skies for the rebound. And that means 35 more seconds for Kansas to run some clock, probably. Yep, good. Over to Collins, and there's still plenty of time in the shot clock as Warren reached around, knocked it loose, and Reed stole it. And to the hoop, Taylor for two. Well, there's that career high. He was Kansas's MVP in the first half. Cade Davis, can he get another one? Nope, short on that one. And Patello with a rebound and kisses it off the glass. Timeout 104 left, and it's 80-73. 
How big has Cole, Cole Aldridge been tonight, Ron? Watch this. Oh, there's the steal. Off the offensive rebound, and then Tyshawn Taylor from St. Anthony's in Jersey City. And here's a guy that averaged 10 points a game on his high school team. He's got 25 tonight. Well, coming up next on Sports Center, what the Star Sooners injury means for Oklahoma's tournament run. What Donovan wants to see finding an extension with the Eagles and details of the release of a Colts legend. That and more coming up on Sports Center immediately following our game. I can tell you right now, this loss, if it's a loss for Oklahoma, will mean nothing in terms of their tournament run as long as this guy comes back healthy. The, the basketball committee will take note of the great effort tonight so far by Oklahoma. And Kansas, Ron, is angling for a two seed. That's interesting. Marquise Morris uh, had been taken out of the game, and Bill Self was standing there hollering at the rest of the team, and he kept shoving him on the floor. And uh, <laughs> the official looked up and said, you can't play with six. So, and Marquise just started laughing. <laughs> Remember, you see Whittle, the two twins. These guys were not here a year ago. In fact, there's been times this year where mentally they weren't, you know, early in the season, they weren't here. But they've really, really matured along with this young guy. Yeah, Tyshawn Taylor, new personal pass tonight. He's, uh, he's missed. Three free throws in a row, but he got a two-pointer a moment ago as Morningstar goes to the bench. Remember earlier in the year, I mentioned Tyshawn Taylor on. I said he's got a little bit of Russell Robinson and a little bit of Mario Chalmers in him. And he's, of course, he's wearing that number 15 that uh, Mario Chalmers wore. 26 points now for Taylor. Taylor Griffin off the mark. And Collins makes the rebound. And all of a sudden, some groans from the crowd as they are down 81-73. And that uh, foul right there is going to send a lot of people to the exits with 46 seconds showing. Five fouls on Warren. He will get a giant ovation, and he should. 23 more points for the freshman from Fort Worth. He was sizzling in the first half. I, I think Jeff Capel is going to come away, Ron, with some lessons, particularly with his team battling back from a 20-point deficit in the second half. You know, you have to give credit to the guy at the line. We talked about all the things that he did. He's the one that really put the collar on Willie Warren for a time after he had such a hot streak and really cooled him off. Right? Well, I think that's a great point. Bill Self came out. You know, you talk about in-game adjustments. And Bill Self quietly is one of the best at that. Ron, your point is so right on because Collins, at the start of the second half, got into Willie Warren's grill, and he was not the same player that he was in torturing KU in the first half. Ten-point ball game. Patel, good heavens, he's blocked by Aldridge. How many blocks does he have tonight? That's three. Boy, he's got, if he's got three, he's got another ten where he just, you know, intimidates you at the rim, even if he doesn't come up with the ball. Inside, Patillo in this time did not gain position. Marquise Morris. Morris. That's his fifth personal, That's his fifth personal foul. He's going to go to the bench. How about Kansas, Ron? They're about to go to 12 and 1. And their only three losses a year ago in a 37 and 3 national title run were all in conference. Right now, this stage of the season, only one in conference loss with 80% of Bill Self scoring from the middle out the door. Here's a guy that was there last year, and his friend made the point during the ball game. He only averaged about eight minutes because he had so much talent inside. But he learned and has really benefited this year's team because of what all he did learn. That's a great point. We saw many practices last year. Where I'm sure Paul Aldridge wanted to, I'm sure he wanted to go home to his dorm room and cry. <laughs> Playing against Sasha Khan, Darnell Jackson, Terrell Arthur. 
And he got banged around. He took his lumps, but and of course this year he took a big lump when he came to the bench. He said, "I think they broke my nose." Of like Nebraska. And, yeah, Bill Self had to start laughing. He said, "It's pretty crooked, son." But they did. So he just got the mask on, and he looks as though he feels a lot better playing without it. You know, it's funny. They, there's a saying that goes at some schools, tradition never graduates. And that's so true at KU because when you think back to the guys that Bill Self inherited, like Christian Moody and Wayne Simeon passing on their knowledge down to Julian Wright, the well author, Darnell Jackson, they passed it down to Aldridge, Ron, and Aldridge is passing it down to the first and Quintrell Thomas. Grand nine-point ball game, and Collins can push it back out to a ten-point margin. Well, I think the best point made tonight was made by uh, by Fran when he said, "As Aldrich, good heavens, just picked up rebound number 21. That's to go along with 14 points." When you said that this is not going to have any effect on Oklahoma as far as their run to get a high, high seed in the NCAA tournament, probably a number one. Well, I believe that. I believe Kansas has helped themselves tonight. And I just, you know, you, you don't root. But if we get to the Big 12 tournament and there's a rematch with Blake Griffin, that's going to be one heck of a rematch. Hey, guess what? This is true irony. The record that uh, that Aldridge is going to tie tonight is that of Nick Collison, who was in attendance, who plays for the Thunder. This K. Davis way outside with his fourth three of the night. 85-78 and Collins fouled again. And let's take a look at Sharon Collins in the second half. Well, you remember how good he was at setting up his teammates in the first half, Ron. But he's the leader of this team, not just spiritually, but with his play on the floor. He recognized when it was time to take over, and take over is exactly what he did. Bill Self told us back at the beginning of the season, and I think it was the weekend after we had done the UMass game in which they lost in Kansas City before over 17,000 people. But we were asking him about leadership on the team, and, and he said, yes, he deserves the right to have this team called his team. And uh, I think is what we have seen tonight is a great example of, yes, he does. I mean, it is his ball club. And I think that's what you call smart coaching, too. <laughs> <laughs> Giving Sharon Collins the reins. Sports Center coming up immediately following our game. That should be in about 17 seconds. Aldrich tries for the rebound. It goes off his foot out of bounds. 13 on the clock. Oklahoma will get one more chance at it. Remember Sharon Collins' freshman year. At the end of that year, Bill Self actually told us he might have been their best player at that time. Collins, great ones on that team. Collins rebounds, and uh, Kate Davis reaches in for a foul. Well, the first round of the round robin is over, and Kansas is going to go to 12 and 1. Oklahoma will fall to 11 and 2. Kay Davis uh, goes to the bench to a well deserved round of applause. Four three pointers coming off the bench, and some good stiff defense as well. Six points for Collins. Kate Davis fouled out. You can see with the 12 points, the four three pointers. Two seconds, down to one. Too hard, rebounded on the floor. And Kansas wins a hard fought battle here in Norman over the Oklahoma Sooners. Sports Center is coming up next. Final score tonight, 87 to 78. Coming up next at ESPN Sports Center. For more on this game, tune to ESPN News for a post-game extra. I'm Ron Franklin for Ron Frischel and Holly Rowe. So long, everybody, from Norman, Oklahoma.